Hey, a pleasant good day, everybody. This is Sports Night News. I'm Joe Bork, and this is going to be the latest edition of the grittiest take as we talk about our Flyers signing Hayden Hodgson to an entry level contract for the minimum after he became the Phantoms' leading goal scorer after two seasons ago, as the Royals did not play in the pandemic season last year. He did fantastic down in Reading for the Reading Royals. So Hayden Hodgson now is going to get an opportunity with our Philadelphia Flyers eventually, potentially this season, as they said that they signed him per reports from Tony Androkis and others because there was fear of losing him by getting the notice he got and attention from scouts at the AHL level and NHL level to other NHL teams to an ELC. So the Flyers signed him. They cleared up enough contract space. I think they're still at 44 or 45 contracts at the Hodgson. I can't remember if it was 44 after or 44 before, but either way, they still have contract actual space to bring in the Brinks, bring in the Atards, bring in the Noah Cates, bring in the O'Briens or whoever else they want to sign. If it's not all those guys and one other other guy in a group and then don't sign one of those guys, I'm not entirely sure, but they do have room to bring in those guys per se. And now they have Hayden Hodgson who possesses a lethal shot, basically plays a Tom Wilson style. Uh, He scores, he shoots the puck really well, he's very intuitive on the ice, he's very instinctive, he's very smart, he's a very smart and wise player on the ice, Hayden Hodgson, and really just knows how to get to the right spots to score, but also make plays. Now, I'm not saying he's going to beat Tom Wilson, nobody plays that style to that level, but I'm just saying he plays in that style where he beat the living crap out of anybody on top of getting to the right spot on the ice and sometimes goes overboard just like Hayden Hodgson, but that's all, I love watching those old school style players, and that's even what Tony Androck has said about him, and I wholeheartedly agree there. When it comes to their lines, I don't agree with this if this is what it becomes. It has JVR, Hayes, Atkinson. I don't know why JVR is on the first line at this point, so there's that. Uh, Farabee, Frost, Konechny. I would have rather had Owen Tippett put Konechny on the first line. Let Tippett stay with Frost. I'm not sure. Cat Friendly is wrong sometimes, so if it ends up being Tippett with Frost, I agree with them staying with that. But on this report, it does have a changing, which I think they should keep Tippett with Frost. I thought they looked good when they had him together in Tippett's first game. And also, they have familiarity from the World Juniors, so why the heck mess with that? Uh, then, So it has here Limblum Brown, uh, Tippett. I would put Limblum Brown, JVR. And then have Konechny go up to the first line and put Owen Tippett on that second line with Farabee and Frost. Then they have Wilman and McEwen uh, here where they don't even have uh, the extra forward because they put Lawden, or not Lawden, Lawden's injured. They put um, Hodgson back down, uh, optioned with the Phantoms. So it looks like they might go dressed with... Uh, just 11 forwards tonight uh, from looking at this is that they only have Wilman and McEwen listed as a fourth line right now with the scratch being an injured Kevin Conor. So uh, it looks like the Flyers are going to go at it shorthanded from looking at cap friendly against Detroit tonight, who has been a better hockey team. Their best play is at home in hockey town. Haven't been good on the road, and that's what bit them in the ass this year in terms of getting in the playoffs. But Proveroff York, I've liked how that's looked since they put those two together. Sandheim Risto's obviously been good together all year, and then Yandel's not good anymore, but they're playing him for the streak. And Sealer uh, has been a solid fill-in defenseman for us, playing almost 40 games now uh, at 38 games. So that's how the lines shake out. I hope they do. And I hope Yo, if he does have the lines like this, does put Frost back with Tippett if, say, that third line is not looking too sexy in the second line. Uh, the Konechny Frost chemistry doesn't look as good as how he looked with Tippett. I hope he does switch that back because I don't know why you would mess with that, but that's how Calf Friendly has reported. But again, sometimes the reports aren't right and the lines do come in differently. Then it's Pertuzzi, Larkin, Raymond for Detroit. They have Rana, Sutter, Zadino in the second line. Uh, Adam Erne, uh, Joe Valino, and Sam Gagne. Uh, Giovanni Smith, Michael Rasmussen, and Oscar Sundquist, newly acquired Oscar Sundquist, that's going to get back into a lineup, has been banged up this year a little bit in St. Louis, gets to come to Detroit and really um, try to supplant himself back into being how great he was for St. Louis, not even just last year, but throughout the run and, and, and all that as well. He, he was a really solid player during his time as a bottom six level guy, especially for St. Louis. He just kind of ran into injuries this year. Jordan Austerly and then Maurice Sider is their first line. Owe Ulevi and Philly Perona is their second line. Mark Stahl and Gustav Lindstrom um, is their third line who's going to try to continue to develop into a solid passer defenseman that probably is going to have to grow his defensive side more as time goes on at the age of 23. Um, still as he develops. So, and then they have Nadelkovich slotted to be the guy going in 
where on the flyer side, it does have uh, Carter Hart slotted to be the guy going in. So pretty good young goaltender matchup here. Alk Nadelkovic, very solid young goaltender. Did let in a bad goal a couple weeks ago, but I don't fault him for that. I made a video on that about how I still think he's a hell of a goaltender. And he's just having a little bit of a skid. Uh, Carter Hart, of course, has been really good this year. So I think there's going to be a good goaltender matchup. I do think it's going to be a struggle for the Flyers, who, of course, didn't look the greatest the last time in Hockey Town. But we'll have to see how they can come out. I think the mojo and the punch, like Chuck Fletcher said in the press conference, if they can just play with better energy each game and better just not doing those dumbfoundingly plays where you just kind of go, why did he drop that back? Like, they just play with more spunk, more energy, but also more witch to them and don't overthink everything like they have seemingly done most of the season like they didn't do last game, then they will be in a much better position to actually have success against Detroit. But as I've said uh, multiple times this year, when it comes to this Philadelphia Flyers team, uh, I don't peg them and predict them to win any games anymore. I just go in watching the young guy and watching the Cam Atkinsons I love to watch, watching Kevin Hayes flourish like he did last game and enjoying that, enjoying Morgan play with Tibbet and how he was able to get going, which is why I don't know why they would move away from that. I enjoy all that. I'm not, at this point, the wins are pointless because obviously in most cases too, everybody wants to get a better draft pick, but I would like to also try to build a little bit more of a winning culture if it's not even getting the wins in the end, but just playing like we did last game it with a much better style, much better energy, and also just much better. Just do what you know you're able to do. Don't overthink everything. Obviously, we know TK has skill. He's overthunk it sometimes and passed too much this year. Obviously, we know Kevin Hayes has skill and is working way back from injuries. He really showed that um, his skill and the ability, which is his biggest thing, to get to the net front last game. So, obviously, you want to see those things continue going into next season, and that builds a winning atmosphere as well. Even if you don't win on the scoreboard at the end, doing those things builds back to having a winning vibe going into next season and feeling much better about yourselves going into next season. But peace out, everybody. Please continue to subscribe down below or above on the Easy Jews Widget to keep us growing to 215 or more by the end of March. I really appreciate you guys' love and support this far. This has been the latest edition of the Grittiest Take. Let's go, Flyers. Let's try to get a W or at least, like I said, play the right way going out for the rest of this season and continue that from playing the Isles in a very good format to now playing the um, Detroit Red Wings in Hockey Town. And then on Thursday, they're going to be playing in St. Louis. So two, one solidly tough game for how good Detroit plays in Detroit, and then one really tough game coming up on Thursday. Peace out, everybody, and have a safe day.